Lab TV travels to an Air Force Research Lab in Dayton, Ohio, where engineers are teaching teams of robots to communicate with each other. First, they create virtual robot environments using computer modeling and simulation. So we try to represent reality in the computer, in a virtual environment like a video game, and study the behavior and how things react. So the model actually includes you know, computer software, like from a standard video game that has to be developed, that has to be programmed, and, and it's executed, much like video games. The engineers program the virtual robots to communicate using radio waves, just like your wireless network at home. Here we have a computer representation of the robots as they move. You see the robot here, and basically this is what the robot is transmitting and is allowing us to see what the robot sees when they're sending out radio waves and they're trying to communicate with other robots. Using the computers lets them study hundreds, even thousands of designs. Then they take what they have learned in the computer world and test it with small, inexpensive robots. We're trying to be very, very realistic, very close to the real world, and then after we experiment in the computer, we try to replicate the same behavior in the actual robots. This is the experimental platform that we use in the lab. It is a robot. Um, it's uh, actually, it's uh, very similar to the robotic vacuum cleaners that uh, you can buy that go around your house and sweep up. This one's a special version of it uh, that instead of the vacuum parts, where that would normally be is an open bay where you can mount your own hardware. In this one, we have a uh, Wi-Fi radio like you'd find in a home router and a uh, full-blown computer on a stick. We have basically a team of these robots working together. But they have to communicate with each other in order to solve a goal. Each one has a simple set of behaviors that it can do, but by combining these across a large number of robots, they can form rather complex behaviors. Each robot uses sensors to navigate. In the front of it has bumper sensors that can detect whether it's run into an object and also whether it's hit on the uh, right or left side. And it also has uh, what are called cliff sensors on the bottom. So a sensor is a device, just like a camera, just like a microphone, that detects and collects information from the surrounding environment. There are many different kinds of sensors. Home alarm systems have a, a motion sensor that can detect movement within a room. There are temperature sensors, thermostats. Even your regular telephone, you have a microphone in your telephone and that is sensing the voice and transmitting that information. Light sensors turn on your night lights and position sensors run your Nintendo Wii. Some sensors detect pressure, others measure chemicals or electricity. After a sensor detects something, the information can be converted into electrical signals so a computer or a person can respond to it. So the next steps are going to be putting other types of sensors and studying that behavior. Can we record the actual images? Can we record sound? Can we record movement? The ultimate goal will be to put some of these sensors in airplanes. We're the Air Force. We fly planes. So in either manned planes or unmanned planes and have the information captured by the sensors be combined to get a better picture of the surrounding environment. Yeah, we are playing with toys all day, but uh, it's more than that. We're also learning uh, how to solve difficult problems. We are, are always working with the latest and greatest in the technology, and we are the first ones to see what the art of the possible is and make it happen. To find out more about virtual environments, sensors, and robots, check out labtvonline.org.